something special for you this morning uh, to prepare our hearts for communion. Let me ask you to open your Bible to 1 Peter chapter 5 with me. 1 Peter chapter 5. As been mentioned earlier by the Lundies, many of us are returning from a global leadership conference that was held in Manila, Philippines. I've asked several of the brothers and sisters who went uh, to this global leadership conference to share something they've gotten out of the, the experience. First Peter 5, verse 8. The Bible says, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And as we visited Manila, And as we spent time with the brothers and sisters there, and brothers and sisters from all over the world, we were able to feel that sense of being in the battle together and being a family together as we strive to resist the devil, as we strive to serve God. I hope that the sharing this morning moves your hearts and reminds you of the glory, the power, and the joy that is the cross. Um, With that, I give you the preciados. I'm a little short. Good morning. Um, so I just wanted to share with everybody um, that the one thing I took away that really hit me was uh, our brother Chi, who is in Hong Kong right now. He's already in the Hong Kong mission team. He was um, sharing about the, that they go and pray in Sydney. They go and uh, walk at the beach and they pray. And they do that from 12 midnight to 6 in the morning. And as they were doing that, they, they came across three uh, gentlemen who are who didn't believe in God, who were like who who's, who is that? We don't even know who we're talking about. And uh, so they they started saying, "Well, walk with us, and we'll we'll share with you what what he who he is and what it's all about." And they started um, sharing faith with them, and, and they 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 studied the Bible with them, and they became disciples, and they were actually at the GLC. Wow. So it was pretty awesome. So what's really cool about it is that. Uh, Chi said, look, it wasn't, it wasn't that we did anything, it is that God did it. Because he took three people who didn't even know who he was, and we, all, we, all we did was pray, and God did all the work. We, we just happened to, you know, he put them in our path, we took them and, and just said, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll teach you, and then God did the rest. So he's, he's basically saying it's, it's through prayer that miracles happen. Um, we we kind of just become instruments of God. And he uses us however, you know, we're best suited. And it's amazing what, can, what, what the results are. Because um, these guys were atheists, um, proclaimed atheists, and now they're disciples and they're in the kingdom. And they're in the Sydney uh, church. So it's pretty awesome. So to God be the glory and thank you. Okay, um, well, Mobu, hi everyone, uh, welcome, and um, it's a privilege to be here in front of you guys to talk about, um, um, you know, I'd like to share what I got out of GLC. Um, it is really incredible and, like, amazing, you know, to see all of our brothers and sisters all over the world, like, rep- represented within, like, 27 different countries, and it's just really um, encouraging um, and it's a great vision to be able to see that we have, you know, brothers and sisters all over the world that, that um, you know, you've never met in person and you see them on the street or, uh, you know, it, within the hotel and you're just like, hey, bro, hey, sis, hi, this is, I'm Bianca from, you know, Phoenix, how are you? And just so like, we just, it's, I just felt like all, all the love, like I would just like hug them and then we'd take pictures and then like, um, you know, we'd invite them to like, um, you know, have lunch. You know, it's just awesome to see, you know, to see the love. And um, it's like, um, like, it's just, to, I would like walk up with that, walk up to them with great confidence and just like hug them. You know, it's like, it's like a family. So it's just, it feels, I felt very loved and I, I felt like, this is real family, you know, and then also another thing I wanted to share is that um, 
Um, you know, being that we see our brothers and sisters all over the world, regardless of our race and any sort of background, that um, whether we come, whether we, you know, we're rich or poor, um, it doesn't matter. As long as we love God and we're with God, we're family. That's all. Thank you. To God be the glory. Good morning, family. It's great to be back. Uh, Revelations 2, uh, starting verse 2, it says, I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men, that you have tested those who have claimed to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for a name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Uh, at the GLC, uh, Kip preached an amazing lesson called Apocalypse. I, I encourage you guys to, to go online. All the lessons are online to look at it. And, and I don't know about you, but sometimes I can go through the motions of life. Uh, I can get my kids up early, get them to school, pick them up, homework, uh, getting to church on time, you know, meetings and whatnot. But if I don't remember why I'm here in the first place, because Jesus died on the cross, then I'm not, I'm not remembering my first love. So I want to remember uh, to have faith and remember why I'm here. It's because of Jesus, not because I'm in some sort of routine or because I must go, because I get to go be with my family every single time. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, I wanted to share with you a scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Starting in verse 13, it says, Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace that God has given you. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Something that really impacted me at the GLC was being able to, to meet disciples from all around the world. Being able to see that we are unified as a family worldwide. But I was able to see that the disciples from the foreign churches that we send our missions money to really actually helps them. I was able to see and interact with disciples who looked at me right in the eyes and they were just grateful. They probably wouldn't have been a disciple if we hadn't given our missions to them. So it helped me to connect emotionally to what we actually do here in Phoenix and how it actually helps men around the world praise God. I was able to meet a brother and they looked at me in the eyes and they said, bro, thank you so much for the missions. And I was like, wow, I don't think I was that connected to it until someone actually said thank you for that. So one thing I wanna, I wanna share with you guys is the heart that they were able to show me and the gratefulness to God that they had for us and our generosity and how we actually do affect the disciples and people who will be disciples around the world. Thank you. Hi, in Revelations 12, verse, 5, verse 13, it's 11, that says, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. And Revelations was preached at the GLC a lot. Um, and I love the scripture because it's, if we don't share our faith, there is no testimony to overcome the devil with. Um, and um, to, see, to go to the GLC and see so many people who have it so much harder than Americans do was crazy. I, uh, in particular, I talked with some Indian disciples. Um, one uh, sister, her husband was not a disciple. She had been a disciple for eight years. And uh, just the implications of India, the, she's probably getting beat for that. She's, there's a lot of violence that's allowed to go on over there. And then to hear Raja, Raja talk about the New Delhi uh, mission team and how um, even uh, disciples born in Chennai will not be ready for the persecution that comes there. That there's public beatings, there's public maligning and all this crazy stuff. And the worst I get here in America is a dirty look, yet I'm so afraid to share my faith. Um, it just convicted me a lot um, to just know that it's so easy. Why do I like struggle so much to do it? Like, it's such a blessing to be able to share faith. And um, God is, I don't know, he's very generous here. And so 
Um, the conviction I'm going to take back to Phoenix is that to share my faith and to overcome the devil with the word of my testimonies. Thank you. Good morning, church. Um, I just really love the GLC. Everything was awesome. And I really want to share a scripture with the women in Romans 9, 1 through 3. And it says, I speak the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience uh, confirms it through the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race. And I shared the scripture because just going to the GLC made me think, man, like, where is my love for the lost? You know, in, in one of the lessons at uh, the campus Devo, Mike Patterson, he was talking about, like, we have lost our love for the lost. And I'm like, yeah, like, I feel like I have lost my love for the lost. We stop weeping for the lost. We can go through the motions and go and share faith and do Bible studies, but are we really loving people? Are we really, like, weeping and fasting for them? And I really love that we had the prayer room at the GLC, and we got to go pray, like, every, like, any time that you want to go pray, just sign up and go pray, because I was just like really like thinking man like am I just doing it in vain conceit it's not about me it's not about us it's about God and I think it's just like really having my mindset like there is so many girls out there that I lost especially just being in the teen ministry and like thinking about myself as a teenager and just struggling so much and thinking like man am I like really praying for these girls and so I just um something that really got out of me on this GLC is just to really pray and weep for souls because if we're not sharing, if we're not like giving our love to people, they're going to go to hell, you know, and we are to save these people. We are to help them. So I just really want to go after loving people and weeping and fasting, knowing that God is going to make miracles happen here in the church. Thank you. Good morning. Um, Acts 2.42 says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. And uh, I appreciated Kip's lesson about prayer. Uh, you know, something he thought about was, why are the Muslims known for prayer? Yeah. You know, or even a lot of religious Christians out there are known for prayer. You know, but are we known for prayer? And uh, I thought, well, I'm not known for prayer. And uh, Talma mentioned the, the war room was what it was called, that prayer room. And it was an ongoing prayer room where somebody was praying there throughout the entire conference over the course of every 24-hour period. So um, at 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning, whenever it was, uh, there was always someone praying. And um, I had the privilege to go and pray in there as well. But, um, you know, during one of the particular prayers we had in the congregation, uh, we lifted up our hands to pray. You know, we prayed like this, and we all bowed our heads. And it's just convicting because um, I felt very humbled because I think when you actually pray like that, you really stop and you honor God. And you really stop and say, I am nothing and you are everything. And I am, uh, you know, just, it just humbles me because in my pride, I've failed to really take my real vulnerabilities, my real weaknesses, my sadnesses, my sorrows, to really take that wholeheartedly to God over the course of, I don't know, months and months. Um, I, it's been my battle. I, I'll do it inter intermittently, but it just helped me to stop and realize, I mean, and of course, being in the, the fellowship where there's so much love, uh, just the power of how much God has worked powerfully throughout the world, you know, in our movement. Uh, it's crazy um, that now we have a church in Phnom Penh, you know, Cambodia. Um, but, you know, just to be able to lift up our hands, um, because I, I really remembered, I was reminded of how awesome God is, you know, that I, and since then, um, you know, I just, I mean, in the war room, I just prayed and cried, I mean, probably for a good half hour, just crying and praying, because it just, it was good. I had to just stop and go, this is how I need to pray, you know. Um, because it reminds me of God's power, his sovereignty, you know, that he's the one that's going to do it, um, because I no longer want to be God's obstacle, you know, but I want to be used as God's vessel. So thank you. Please open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 11. Let's give a round of applause to those who share this morning. First Corinthians 11. 
Verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. All over the world, in 33 different nations, today, your brothers and sisters are taking communion. Our visit to Manila made that a reality, not just an idea. This morning, as you take the bread, think about Jesus' body broken for you, as your brothers and sisters and other nations have and will do this morning. As you take the fruit of the vine that represents his blood that was shed for you, think about that on your behalf. I hope it moves you to be radical. I hope it moves you to be free. I hope it moves you to pray more, to love more, to give more, to care more. Let's have a prayer as we meditate on Jesus' sacrifice for us. Let's pray. Father, please be with us right now as we take the bread that represents the body that was broken for us. Help us remember what Jesus went through and help us have a deep gratitude in our hearts. God, I pray that as we take the fruit of the vine that represents your son's blood that was shed on the cross for us, help us examine ourselves right now. Help us be determined to walk in the light. Help us have a vision like you had a vision. Do not just love the people on our block. Not just love the people that are like us, the same color, the same background. But help us really have a love for the lost like your son had a love for the lost all over the world. But I pray it starts with us right now being deeply grateful, deeply grateful for your sacrifice on the cross. We pray this in Jesus' name.